Hurricane season 2022 is officially coming to a close today. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Naso with the final video update of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season and it was a busy season. We had 14 named storms, eight of them became hurricanes and two of them, Fiona and Ian, became dangerous major hurricanes. A major hurricane is a category three, four, or five. Now, we're gonna recap every storm from the year, and I'm gonna try and do this as fast as I can, because not every storm was memorable. The first storm of the year was Alex, and that developed after drenching Florida, caused some fatalities as it moved north of the Bahamas. However, not a hurricane. Then we had Bonnie, and Bonnie was an interesting feature because it looked like Bonnie could become a dangerous hurricane for July in the Caribbean, but instead it took too long developing. It struck Costa Rica, Nicaragua as a tropical storm and then became a major hurricane over in the Pacific side. Did cause some problems down there in Central America though. Colin, barely remember you, short-lived tropical storm made landfall near Hunting Island, South Carolina in July and was a very minimal system, but still rip currents and dangerous surf can take lives. You gotta be very careful. Hurricane Danielle, that was the first hurricane of the season. That was a category one, and it didn't cause any problems, but it remained out there for quite a long time looping around, if you recall. Earl kind of followed in Danielle's footsteps and became a stronger hurricane, and two people were killed from Earl in Puerto Rico when lightning hit their jet ski. Then we had Fiona. Now, Hurricane Fiona was a very dangerous, long-tracked major hurricane. Got up to 130 mile per hour winds, a category four, very large and powerful. It made three landfalls. The first in Puerto Rico is a category one. The second in the Dominican Republic is a category one. And then it slammed into Nova Scotia as a post-tropical cyclone with a record barometric pressure of 931 millibars. We'll see if that's tweaked at all in the final report, but I believe that's a record for Canada for any storm ever. A very powerful storm killed many people, caused billions of dollars in damage. Don't be surprised if the name Fiona is stricken from the hurricane name list when we reuse this name list six years from now. By the way, Fiona was the replacement name for Hurricane Francis back in 2004. So should Fiona be retired, it would be the third F name on this list since this list began in 1980. Gaston, don't even remember him. Honest to God, I, I don't remember Gaston because of all the chaos that came in September, but it was out there as a tropical storm. Hermine, Hermine was deadly because it capsized an inflatable migrant ship off Sengal in West Africa, and that ended up killing over 30 people, there was one survivor, and it caused a lot of flooding rains to the Canary Islands and some damage. The Canary Islands, that's where that Cumbre Vieja volcano is, and there's the doomsday scenario of that volcano erupting and a landslide into the Atlantic Ocean and taking out the entire Atlantic Basin with a tsunami. So anytime we have a system raining like mad near the Canary Islands, you don't want it to rain too much and cause a landslide. So Hermine was memorable despite being very weak. Then we get to Hurricane Ian, clearly the storm of the year. One could argue the storm of this decade thus far. It was a Category 4 hurricane, borderline Category 5. We'll see what the final report says. Did Ian reach Category 5 offshore Florida? Did it remain a high-end 4? I don't know. Nevertheless, it made landfall in Cuba as a Category 3, a major hurricane, 125 miles per hour. And then it made landfall in Florida near Cayo Costa, which is just north of Captiva Island, as a strong Category 4, 150 miles per hour. And uh, the right side, the right front quadrant just destroyed Sanibel Island, Fort Myers Beach, with devastating Category 4 winds and surge. Then it made its final landfall near Punta Gorda, directly near Pirate Harbor, Florida, and then up in Georgetown, South Carolina as a Category 1. This was the deadliest hurricane to hit Florida since the Great Hurricane of 1935, and it has caused at least $50 billion damage, one of the most disastrous hurricanes in American history. Very anomalous to Hurricane Charlie. Look at the tracks of Charlie and Ian almost identical. Charlie was much smaller, moved much faster, and was in early August 
of 2004, whereas Ian was later in the year much slower and much larger, and that was why the storm surge that we didn't see with Charlie happened with Ian, one of the most devastating hurricanes in Florida history and in American history. Hurricane Ian. No doubt that storm's going to be retired and join the ever-growing list of eye storms that have been retired in the last 20 years or so. Hurricane Julia. Now, Julia could have been a major hurricane for October. However, it ran out of time, made landfall there as a Category 1 hurricane, and it did cause some problems. There have been 91 deaths and a lot of damage down there in areas of Central America, and so don't be surprised if the name Julia is stricken from the list. Uh, I think Fiona, Ian, and possibly Julia could be taken off that name list there, not to mention storms that I'll get to in a minute. Julia, of course, came before Carl. It spit Carl off. Carl caused a couple of deaths because of the flooding rains. Nevertheless, it was one of the rare storms to get into the Gulf of Mexico and not hit land on the Gulf side because it dissipated, much like Hurricane Lisa. Hurricane Lisa also fell apart after making landfall near Belize City as a Category 1 hurricane. That caused some damage, but thankfully there were no fatalities, and it also, like Carl, moved into the Gulf and then just dissipated. Didn't have to deal with it then. Hurricane Martin was a very large storm, but we thought it would get a little stronger than it did. It was a Category 1 in early November, a November hurricane, which does not happen every year. But remember I said these La Nina years, they could have a lot of late season activity, and we did. October, November, we definitely did. And then, of course, the last storm of the season, just weeks ago, feels like longer than that. Hurricane Nicole made landfall in Abaco Island as a tropical storm. Then it made landfall over Grand Bahama Island as a Category 1. And then it hit Florida very near Vero Beach and North Hutchinson Island as a Category 1 hurricane. A landfall of a hurricane in the month of November in Florida, only the third time on record, going back 150 or so years. And the last time it happened was 1935. Uh, the Yankee hurricane of 1935, and then 1985 with Hurricane Kate. So Florida, you do get hit in November, but it is not that common. And Nicole caused a lot of problems and death and exacerbated the problems we had seen from Hurricane Ian back at the end of September. So interesting statistics about this season. Well, number one, we had nothing in August. This was the first season in 25 years since 1997 when we didn't have a single named tropical storm during the whole month of August. Not one measly tropical storm. The last time that happened in 97, it was an El Nino year, which is unfavorable. This was a La Nina year. So this is the first time on record we've ever had a busy La Nina year and nothing in August. However, that didn't stop the activity that came later on in September. And we definitely had activity. Hurricane Fiona was the lowest barometric pressure we ever saw in Canada. Hurricane Ian was one of the strongest hurricanes ever to hit the United States. And we also had the Dominican Republic. You got hit by Hurricane Fiona as a Category 1 hurricane, and that was the first time you had a hurricane in 18 years in the Dominican Republic since Jean in 2004, which coincidentally, Jean was retired and replaced with Julia. Interesting. I thought we'd have another major hurricane in October. I was wrong, maybe November. Did not happen, thankfully. I think Hurricane Julia could have been had it had more time over water, and uh, she lost her opportunity there, but still caused a lot of problems. So Hurricane Ian definitely takes the cake, the storm of the year. It's been a heck of a hurricane season, a very odd season. This whole year has felt very strange. A lot of things have been broken. A lot of rules have been broken. We didn't have anything in August, but then we had a lot in September. We had a hurricane in not so great conditions become a monster off Florida. Nevertheless, I'm Mike Naso, and that's the latest on hurricane season 2022. We'll see what 23 has in store. Take care.